hello everyone uh, welcome to my session one on uh, maternal infant young child nutrition and uh, experience for from fields here in this uh, session i'll be discussing about uh, you know um, nfhs 4 and 5 data which has just come out uh, I'll be talking about what is the definition of maternal infant young child nutrition. Uh, I will also touch base upon our data from uh, different projects that we have done in urban slum as well as in rural areas, tribal areas, you know, at the district level. Now we're also doing project at the state level. Uh, so I'll be discussing that. And I will also discuss about what are the important, uh, what are the frameworks, you know, what on what frameworks we uh, created this program, uh, specifically in urban slums uh, so i'll be discussing about uh, the framework of uh, maternal infant young child nutrition the implementation of programs and uh, why all these uh, skills are important uh, you know on maternal nutrition uh, breastfeeding uh, techniques complementary feedings so today will be more of an introduction to the course uh, and I'm, uh, I'm more than happy to uh, you know discuss this uh, uh, burning issue of poor nutrition among maternal and uh, young children in our country. So uh, talking about introduction objectives, so uh, basically what is uh, MIYCF? MIYCF is maternal infant young child nutrition. Maternal means pregnant mothers and lactating mothers nutrition uh, and health of course and your infant which is your children between birth to one year of age uh, and there are children, uh, young children, that is under two years of age. So that encompasses basically, you know, feeding practices of not just, uh, you know, uh, young children, but also maternal uh, nutrition. So you're pregnant and lactating mothers. And why it is important? Because uh, this is one of the very important the phase in human beings life you know where where baby is kind of being formed in the womb you know during pregnancy and then basically there's a tremendous amount of growth occurring in baby's brain and baby's physical growth you know and uh, unfortunately in india uh, you know miycf practices are not kind of uh, followed uh, correctly and that's why we have so much of uh, undernutrition so much of malnutrition our iycf indicators you know are pretty very poor actually in india and i'll be discussing that also a little bit of data on that uh, and uh, what can be done in the field so our own experience of uh, what we did in uh, at ngo levels at district level and now we're working at uh, you know at a state level so i'll be discussing about that data also and uh, you know how we have implemented this program you know uh, what can be done uh, what are the learnings uh, and we are still learning it's not that um, I know everything but uh, you know I'm just discussing basically what we have learned so far okay so coming to our NFHS uh, for data now and what is NFHS? NFHS is your National Family Health Survey which is kind of conducted this is a national level survey which is conducted every four to five years of uh, you know time period and uh, recently NFHS 5 data just came out yesterday in fact I'm talking about the national level data uh, so far we had about uh, 22 state and union territory data coming from NFHS 5 uh, which was conducted around say around November 2019 or so during that time time frame period okay um, but since it just came out yesterday I don't have a uh, lot of slides on NFHS 5 which I will eventually have by uh, probably by, by three or four uh, weeks uh, you know on the third or fourth session actually uh, but let's discuss about NFHS 4 okay and uh, I want to kind of show you what what is the uh, problem you know at a at a grassroots level when you look at uh, you know all these children uh, what data basically came out from NFHS 4 okay so here is one slide where we have basically plotted children's uh, in nutrition indicators okay so I would say in this case malnutrition indicators okay and then uh, looking at the percentage wise that how many children are malnourished in India as per NFHS 4 okay so looking at the age wise so here this is your red line is your wasting 
okay again i'll be talking about wasting in, uh, in my uh, you know growth chart session and also in second session which we will be on uh, you know uh, nutrition science of nutrition and malnutrition and i'll be discussing about what are the types of uh, malnutrition uh, so looking at uh, you know just general a uh, viewpoint of how children are doing as for well nfhs for data so our red line indicates children are too thin okay too thin for their height okay that is also called wasting then you have this uh, yellow bar which is your underweight so children basically weigh uh, weigh less than what they are supposed to be at that age okay so that's weight for age uh, is basically your, your underweight uh, area and blue line is stunting stunting means short okay how short children are so if you look at the age wise data uh, look at this red line okay we'll follow red line first which is children are too thin okay for their height or length so 0 to 2 months of age you can see there is a 34.3% uh, children are too thin for their height uh, in under 2 years actually we call it length so they are too thin for their length uh, look at this this line is highest uh, when it comes to uh, age wise criteria so 0 to 2 months is 34.3 as child become older so 3 months 4 to 5 months 6 months 7 to 12 months you can see there is not much change slight change in those uh, you know, waste, wasted children okay that means that first 6 months of age children are not uh, getting proper nutrition uh, what i mean is that of course many of our children are breastfed but with proper breastfeeding, uh, this wasting should come down. They should start gaining weight uh, pretty quickly, you know, when children and mothers are taught proper breastfeeding skills. So this is not happening in India, you know. Uh, almost those children who are born wasted, they kind of stay uh, wasted. Not not many children come out of it. In fact, many children may come out of it, but a lot more children have growth faltering. So, you know, when we work in the field and when we collect data, we see there's a tremendous amount of children children there is a growth faltering now growth faltering uh, you know may not be so much that it shows up uh, on this graph but there is definitely a uh, lot of growth faltering occurring in uh, most of our children you know uh, and many of the children are not breastfed so they are on cow's milk so they do get a lot of diarrhea they get uh, you know a lot of other uh, problems of uh, formula feeding or cow milk uh, feeding and that I will discuss more detail when I come to that session okay so and then what happens after one to two years of age this kind of wasting goes down as you can see from 27% uh, it went down to 21.6% uh, then 18.7% and 17.8% but uh, you know uh, coming from my experience this uh, the SAM you know this acute malnutrition also called wasted children or too thin children they basically it get masked because what happens is when you look at their uh, blue blue line okay now blue line uh, look at this is stunting stunting with children are born short born short or they stay sh short or they become short uh, any of the three could be possibility okay so stunting at birth uh, say between zero to two months is almost 20 percent okay now the stunting kind of stays similar till six months of age that means there is no uh, reversal of stunting uh, and in fact many children probably are falling into stunting uh, under six months of age and when children don't uh, have proper milk transfer milk transfer means uh, transfer from mothers to babies uh, then you know as wasting increases as underweight increases your stunting start showing up okay stunting is more of a long term it's a long term phenomena it's not something which is acute it takes time for child to not grow you know first the weight will not grow and then the height will not grow or the length will not grow okay so here what we are seeing is basically by 7 to 12 months of age look at the stunting level going up okay from 19.11 at 6 months to 24.8 that means this section 7 to 12 months is the time period where mother is introducing solid food okay so in the second Setting of poor nutrition under six months of age, when children are now not fed proper food, okay, uh, which are diversely, diversely, uh, I mean, diverse diet, I would call, uh, those children then continue to not grow or they become, uh, the stunting sets in, you know. In fact, the stunting sets in 
in uh, from four six months and i would uh, in fact go back to even a mother's nutrition if mother's nutrition is not good you know stunting sets in at birth and then uh, poor milk transfer or you know uh, basically formula intake or you know even of those uh uh, you know uh, cow milk uh, in our setting in india it uh, it causes lot i mean of course it causes problem in any child anywhere in the world but in a uh, developing world what we have is basically we don't have clean water we don't have access to you know good sanitation we don't have very really good uh, wash program so this children they get frequent diarrhea frequent uh, pneumonia you know children who are on from the fat now what problem we see in us uh, you know where, where i come from us where most of the children are on formula f- uh, feeding but because of good nutrition you know uh, they they continue to grow well but a uh, problem with formula feeding is it is basically highly ultra processed food you know so this children are at very high risk of developing you know not only cow milk protein allergy but also uh, allergic diseases you know asthma we see a lot of this uh, skin problem you know uh, something called eczema uh, we also see the children are very obese you know uh, in fact uh, you know by 1 2 years of age they are uh, overweight they are obese and we are seeing a type 2 diabetes and by 3 to 4 years of age uh, in us now you know so uh, basically formula or cow milk protein is absolutely no no for uh, in any country but in india specifically definitely no because Uh, we don't have access to clean water in you know in our public health system you know so the children are at very high risk of diarrhea okay uh, but now look at uh, you know now we have uh, almost uh, you know nfh nfh five data came out and we have exclusive breastfeeding rate up to 62% so even those children who are exclusively breastfed uh, are not getting proper milk transfer because of inadequate uh, skills and mothers and healthcare workers okay and when in that setting when children are uh, children they start growing at by 7 to 12 months of age the introduction of, of uh, complementary feeding is so poor that you know the children they just uh, don't do well uh, even after 7 months of age so the stunting continues to increase your underweight you know underweight is your yellow color so you can see the underweight also kind of remains same uh, you know uh, 24.7% at birth to almost 26% uh, at 6 months so again you know that milk transfer has not occurred well and then by 6 months after 6 months as you can see poor introduction of solid food uh, causes uh, decrease in uh, you know uh, poor weight gain in children and because of poor introduction of solid food look at what happens at 1 to 2 years of age tremendous for growth fall train in terms of weight and uh, length of this children okay length we call it uh, for under 2 years of age height is between 2 to 5 years of age uh, so look at this almost doubling of uh, you know uh, stunting which is your height uh, poor height from 9 from 20% to 43% so more than double okay why the sudden increase in stunting because this stunting has not started just from one year of age it has the stunting uh, setting has started from literally from uh, from mother's nutrition to to birth to for six months to 6 to 12 months so everything has gone wrong and this is when you showing up you know child is showing up as a kind of severely stunted or moderately stunted you know at one year of age and again the underweight goes up so you can see see how children are just not growing and the underweight continues to rise you know your stunting basically there is no change whatsoever in stunting level also and you know because children are stunted so much so as per that length of the child you know child weight is absolutely lower lower obviously because children are you know small the vein the bone weight is low you know there is lean mass which is not enough okay so those children are going to be obviously kind of underweight so when you look at the compare the data of uh, length for uh, or the weight for uh, length or the weight for height these children because their bones they are small so their weight is small okay so these children are undernourished but when you look at the uh, acute malnutrition when you look at the when you compare the weight for length criteria these children uh, may look okay 
okay uh, so here that's why you are seeing that you know uh, the sand children or man children wasting is going down but it is masking you know you basically what you're not seeing is uh, acute malnutrition so much you know although this 21% uh, is pretty high because 21% uh, it's it's an emergency you know uh, but we have to look at the holistic uh, way of that child because many time a tall child you know this is what i'm talking about my experiences right now is when you have a tall child who is uh, you know sit thin but he is he has good uh, nutrition going in he has good lean mass and all but he may, he may be tall and lean now those children may show up in wasting okay they may show up as though you know uh, for that height that weight is not enough but if child is metabolically healthy child does not get infection child continues to do well uh, you know uh, cognitively wise you know intelligence wise then i'm not worried too much yes i'm definitely worried about the severe acute malnutrition but you know just wasting by itself at just a uh, cross point data i'm not so I'm not concerned. I'm concerned more about the stunting part and the underweight part, uh, not so much for uh, weight for length or weight for height. Okay, this is my personal view. Uh, so this, this is why we need to take this course to understand the issue and the uh, problems that we are facing in the field and what are the solutions. Okay, so if we can actually fix this area over here, fix mother's nutrition fix your uh, you know uh, breastfeeding skills and fix your complementary feeding uh, uh, intake in children then basically we will get rid of at least stunting and underweight part wasting wasting is very dynamic okay wasting is uh, thin thin for their uh, height or length uh, it's very dynamic so you know, dynamic means if a child gets say one episode of diarrhea okay and the diarrhea is very severe suddenly the child will lose weight so that child may not kind of uh, you know uh, the height will maintain okay the length will maintain but suddenly you know child loses weight uh, because of some illness child you know say refuse to eat for a week in term in case of diarrhea pneumonia or any other acute illnesses that that child will lose weight so that child will show up in your probably ma'am or sam but you know those are acute illnesses so once you treat those illnesses metabolically healthy child will come back right out right out of sam ma'am okay uh, it's not again the borderline children i see in my experiences they come out right back once you treat those infections very quickly with you know whatever medicine which need to be uh, given you know for diarrhea ors and zinc work beautifully you know but children who are chronically malnourished children who are metabolically unhealthy those children once they go into wasting you know they stay there even if you give them say any of those uh, treatment which are recommended by uh, who and uh, unicef you know uh, those those children they can they may come out momentarily from those uh, from that malnutrition acute malnutrition but the as soon as you stop that treatment do they go back again into sam ma'am and this is a huge issue in india you know that means what we are doing is what we are doing for those wasted children you know that acute malnutrition we are momentarily patching them you know by giving them calories giving them uh, uh, protein and all but what happens the once you stop it they go fall back because they just they are not healthy to begin with so my focus is really make them healthy make them strong make the lean mass you know grow them tall make them metabolically healthy and then even if they have minor illnesses they will come back right out as soon as they they you know that illnesses go away because the appetite comes back okay so that's why again my focus is very much on prevention of wasting prevention of stunting prevention of underweight and that's what this i'm going to discuss in this topic now uh, let's start with uh, uh, infant feeding uh, specifically breastfeeding okay i will come to maternal nutrition in one of my session but i don't want to discuss that right now uh, i'm going to talk about basically very very important issue of breastfeeding okay because what i've seen in my experience if babies were breastfed well even if they were born small even if they were born low birth weight even if they were born say uh, you know uh, premature but once that uh, breastfeeding skills were taught to the mother okay by healthcare workers or by anybody you know those babies were absolutely growing very beautifully 
okay this this is we have shown in uh, many projects you know and in fact we are doing this one study which is almost over so i'll be analyzing that data even in that preliminary data we show that low pertweet babies and even borderline uh, underweight babies they were growing uh, beautifully on just breastfeeding proper breastfeeding latch okay so here what i want to show you uh, this is NFHS4 data again. So this green bar is basically your exclusive breastfeeding. Okay, this is age-wise data that I'm showing you. Okay, the blue one, dark blue, is your breastfeeding and other milk. So other milk could be your, uh, you know, calf's milk or, uh, you know, your uh, uh, formula or any other animal milk. Okay, uh, red line, the, the, the red bar, the dark red is not breastfed at all. Okay. Uh, the light red one is breastfeeding and plain water. Okay, so some of these babies were getting water. Okay, there are a lot of myths which are present in people. They feel that when it's hot, you should take give breast milk, uh, breast uh, you know water with size breast milk. So these are some of the uh, percent of children who get breast milk and plain water. And then some mothers or some families they start uh, breastfeeding with complementary feeding. Can you imagine? They start uh, less by less than two months of age. You know. Uh, and this is absolutely because of lack of awareness, okay? So here, uh, this is the data for less than two months of age. Now, as you can see, as the age advances, the exclusive breastfeeding rate goes down, okay? So look at over here up to four to five months of age because this is what is the children should be exclusively breastfed, okay? And uh, look at this, the complementary feeding intake increases, your uh, plain water increases, of course, uh, under six months of age, you know, uh, your uh, complement, your uh, breastfeeding and other milk uh, prevalence increases. But look at your exclusive breastfeeding rate going down tremendously. Why should it go down? If babies are gaining weight on breastfeeding, uh, why should mothers start anything else but breast milk, right? Uh, and this is where uh, the issue is, is that a lot of these babies are not putting on a lot of weight. There's tremendous amount of growth faltering occurring. And, with, and because of that, uh, there is no other choice but mother feel that my baby is not gaining weight. I'm not getting enough milk, you know, and they start uh, uh, top feeds, okay? And this is the issue. This is the issue I faced in India, really working in slums and travel areas, okay? And by six to eight months of age, uh, you can see that now, you know, uh, baby should be started on uh, complementary feeding, you know. So complementary feeding is not started uh, in all the children uh, by the time child is, uh, you know, completing six months. Uh, only about, I would say, less than 50% of children are started complementary feeding. So now you see uh, children are still kind of, some children are on exclusive breastfeeding, you know even up to eight months of age when they should have been started on complementary feeding uh, a lot of the children are only getting breast milk and plain water you know some of them are getting breast milk and uh, so look at the poor uh, starting point of complementary feeding okay and similarly at nine to eleven months of age literally almost about 30 percent of children are not started on complementary feeding Okay, and this is the important stage where after six months, we have to start very nutrient dense complementary food for these children. Okay, so this is the issue uh, in India. This is basically up to one year of age. Our uh, IYCF does not start well uh, in India. Okay, this is an FHS4 data. Now, this is the data of, again, uh, again NFHS4 data. If you look at your uh, minus three standard deviation, okay, uh, which is your weight for length, uh, this is, again, uh, you know, your infant with weight for length, uh, less than minus three standard deviation. And look at the number of children who are uh, acutely malnourished, okay. Acutely malnourished means they are too thin for their length. And this is minus three standard deviation. They are acute, severely malnourished, okay. So I'll discuss more what are the standard deviation, you know, why do children uh, become so malnourished. I'll discuss that later. But, uh, you know, these are sand children, severe acutely malnourished children. So here, you know, uh, this is your blue zone is your low birth weight babies. Low birth weight means less than 2.5 kg okay this is your yellow zone which is your newborn weight uh, infant okay so this is your uh, you know like children who are more than 2.5 kg and uh, this is your uh, newborn with a no normal birth weight uh, i'm sorry about that and then green zone is your all infant so all children basically your normal birth weight as well as your uh, low birth weight babies are basically in green zone so if you look at you know uh, look at the sam the average sam 
okay at uh, uh, around uh, i would say uh, under 6 months old of age is almost 20% you know uh, and it basically you you can see there is not much difference in sam status okay uh, and this is as per who uh, criteria i say similarly for uh, uh, you know normal birth weight you can see similarly it's similar there is not much difference uh, you know in uh, average so uh, it's around 20% okay and there is not much change slight uh, improvement at around 5 uh, months of age you know again because children are not growing at all so the so the uh, length is not increasing and as per that you know basically it's sam is just getting mask okay and similarly for all weight children you know uh, there is not much change uh, in sam status uh, in indian children uh talking about complementary diet diversity and if it is five data uh, i'm just going to talk about 22 uh, states and union territories uh, uh, which data had come out uh, five, you know almost few months ago so i'll be discussing more about that uh, you know look at this uh, few states data okay so here is basically this slide is on complementary food initiation for children uh, age 6 to 8 months this means how many children were started on complementary food uh, between 6 to 8 months now recommendation is to start as soon as baby finishes 6 months which is 180 days so post 180 on 181 day a day child should be started on complementary feeding okay but here look at this These are the uh, number of children who are not started complementary feeding from six to eight months of age. Okay, so uh, kind of solid or semi-solid food, or you know, is not started. So look at this. Uh, Manipur has, uh, you know, so the your your uh, brown color or your gray color is your NFHS four, and your uh, yellow color or I would say orange color is basically NFHS five. So if you look at it, you know, uh, Manipur has a very good uh, uh, initiation. So pretty much, you know, almost eighty percent children uh, they are started on complementary feeding between six to eight months of age. But as we go down, you know, uh, look at Tripura or Bihar. Okay, of course there is an improvement uh, in Bihar from NFHS four to NFHS five. But uh, if you look at it, you know, uh, it's only about you know, say around forty percent children are getting uh, are initiated on complementary feeding at the right age. Okay, uh, Tripura also the remarkable improvement in uh, complementary feeding. You know, but uh, I don't see much uh, uh, improvement in Telangana. you know i don't see much improvement in uh, you know uh, many of these other states in in mizoram the complementary feeding state is not uh, doing very well okay so this is some data of some of the uh, some of the states now this is a uh, slide on breastfeeding children so children who are breastfed between uh, 6 to 23 months of age who are receiving adequate diet okay so adequate diet is your dietary diversity and frequency okay uh, and that basically uh, any amount of course so this is what uh, it shows that in meghalaya uh, and this is the difference between nfhs 4 and nfhs 5 data okay so you can see that you know uh, literally look at this you know uh, most of our children are not Uh, uh, kind of given minimum adequate diet MAD we call it MAD minimum adequate diet so they are not getting minimum adequate diet in a uh, lot of the children you know uh, recently data just came out and only about 11 to 12 percent children uh, in NFHS five data are receiving minimum adequate diet that's very 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 low. Okay, in some states like uh, Gujarat, we have only five percent children who are getting minimum adequate diet. That is your minimum dietary diversity. I will I will discuss that in late uh, later in uh, my other sessions. Uh, but <clears throat> only five uh, percent children in Gujarat. Gujarat is economically advanced state. Okay, one of the very advanced state. Uh, I'm talking about economy wise. And if, if those children are getting only five percent of uh, Uh, only five percent children are getting minimum adequate diet, so you can just imagine what must be happening in other states. But uh, it just again, the lack of knowledge is not the uh, access to food in most of these areas, you know, because I worked in again a lot of these uh, areas, the uh, urban slums, uh, you know, tribal areas. So there is access to food. It's not that there is no access. It's just that there is kind of uh, you know lack of awareness from 
uh, when it comes to uh, mothers families members and uh, you know healthcare workers and we can improve that remarkably okay uh this is uh, basically as you can see uh, in nfhs 5 17 out of 22 states have improved uh, total dietary diversity but uh, we can definitely do better okay uh, again you can see you know most of the states uh, they have about you know uh, say 22 between 15 to 22% uh, uh, minimum adequate diet in children or total children and of course look at this different other states like andhra pradesh you know gujarat uh, minimum liquid diet is very very low okay so who growth charts so uh, i'll be discussing this uh, in like in detail in next session hi everyone i hope you liked my uh, first part of the first session uh, here i discussed about uh, nfhs and NFH, nfhs4 and nfhs5 data and uh, uh, i'm sure you understood uh, you know our young children are really uh, undernourished 30% uh, of them are undernourished uh, that is quite a lot in fact uh, severely malnourished children who when they are admitted in uh, you know uh, nrcs uh, nrcs are basically nutrition rehabilitation centers you know these are uh, these are centers created by um, government to take care of this uh, really malnourished acutely malnourished children and uh, you know uh, those are basically for under 5 years but 30% of children who are admitted in uh, this nrcs are under 6 months of age so you can imagine that how important this uh, first 6 months is because you know one third children who are malnourished are from this age group so uh, that's why i discussed uh, a lot about breastfeeding and you know uh, uh, kind of stunting wasting and underweight uh, under 6 months of age so um, thank you so much um, now i'll be uh, you know talking about the second part of the first session and uh, i'll see you then thanks